Most PC games are made with Windows in mind, which is why Valve needed Proton in order to get games that are made for Windows run on the Steam Deck. You see, Steam Deck runs SteamOS, which is a version of Linux. And we've had a lot of updates to SteamOS in the past year. If you want to check out a video all about a whole bunch of different changes that we've seen to SteamOS since its release last year, make sure that you check out the link in the description. But we have yet to see a big kernel update. That's where Valve updates the building blocks of SteamOS to the latest version. You see, a lot of times what people must understand is what is the kernel when it comes to Linux. And it is the building blocks that Linux is built around. So when you're talking about an operating system, you can update the operating system without updating the kernel. And that's what Valve has been slowly doing for the past year. But the next big update to SteamOS is going to be SteamOS 3.5. And that's going to bring a kernel update. Let's talk about what that means and whether or not you're going to notice any changes. Now, depending on what kind of games you play, you may end up booting into SteamOS and never even noticing any changes. It really depends on how you use your Steam Deck, whether or not there's issues that have been affecting you since the Steam Deck's launch that are going to be fixed with 3.5. PCGamer.com recently sat down with Pierre Lugrafi and he told them a whole bunch of information about what's happening in SteamOS 3.5. Let's take a look. The next big update, SteamOS 3.5, will be the first upgrade to the Linux kernel since launch, and they are getting closer to the latest and greatest with lots of good additions, performance fixes, and functional fixes that will improve all kinds of aspects to the system. In terms of the core functionality and running games and performance, those kind of fixes at this point are mostly out of the way, so you shouldn't see anything transformative here. So basically he's saying there's a lot of stuff that goes on under the hood, and they have been working on streamlining how SteamOS works with games, and for the most part you shouldn't really notice, but for the things that have been problems and stumbling blocks for a long time now, you'll definitely see improvements. Now, one thing that the Steam Deck has supported since launch is simultaneous multi-threading. Basically, it allows one core, one CPU core, to do two things at the same time. Well, it definitely causes a problem because if you're doing two things at the same time and there's this hard-coded feature in Linux on the AMD side, which basically says, when you're all done with this, shut it all down. And if the, if the core is running two threads and it finishes one of them, well, it shuts everything down. It shuts down both threads, and that causes a whole slew of issues. Pierre Lou said, it turns out that when you have two threads on the same core and one thread is still working on something and the second SMT thread goes to sleep, it throws away its cache using the same exact logic. So the thread that's running suddenly loses its L3 cache. In terms of the CPU, that's really bad. It has to kind of refetch everything from memory, which throws in a whole bunch of latency. So if you've ever run into stuttering, it may be SMT that's getting in your way. But depending on what games you play it might not be something that you've ever run into if you play a lot of emulation maybe you emulate switch games on your steam deck it does that pretty well but there is one caveat a lot of people were using power tools in order to disable smt or simultaneous multi-threading the reason that you would do this is because it actually gave you a boost in performance when emulating Nintendo Switch games. I ran into this issue when I was making a video about using the PrimeHack toolset for Metroid Prime and comparing that to what it looked like on the original Wii U versus what it looked like on the Nintendo Switch on Metroid Prime Remastered, and then trying to compare that to what that ROM looked like on the Steam Deck. Well, when I tried to run the remastered ROM on the Steam Deck, I ran into all kinds of stuttering issues, really, really slow, sluggish gameplay, and everybody responded exactly the same way. Install Power Tools. The only problem with that is Power Tools requires root access, and I don't really like the idea of giving some other program root access to my computer. So I decided against it, and I already had the game on my Switch, so I could just play it there. Now, when Valve was asked to give users an option to disable SMT without having to install Power Tools, they declined. 
Here's why. We needed to fix a bug that's making people have to deal with this instead of adding a setting that's super counterintuitive that people shouldn't have to disable. It's supposed to be improving performance across the board, so we wanted to look at the actual root cause of the issue as opposed to adding options that are possibly counterintuitive and hard for people to use, especially if there's already a mod let people do that in the meantime. And that's a really great way to look at it. This is another reason why Valve is awesome. If you look at any other platform holder, none of them, none of them would say, oh, there's already a mod out there. We'll just let people do that until we get it fixed. Steam and Valve, they get it. That's what makes them awesome. He went on to say, we're always straddling that line of, are we this very complex power user product or are we just a very appliance-like product? That's actually a really easy way to get into PC gaming. We recognize that without the options and everything that's powerful about PC gaming, the Steam Deck is nothing. It represents PC gaming. But there's a lot of value in having an appliance-like experience. So we're always trying to represent both and make sure that everyone has access to both. We didn't want to be in a situation where people have to go turn some settings off in order for things to perform well. We just wanted to get that out of the way. And that I absolutely love. Look, I came to the Steam Deck from the world of consoles. I played mostly my Nintendo Switch and my Xbox and my PlayStation. And yes, I had a PC and I used it to play PC games, but I treated it like a console. I just ran it as vanilla as possible. So when I got the Steam Deck, that's exactly what I did for a whole year. It wasn't until the first year was over where I started installing plugins. There's a video for that link in the description, or I ended up replacing my thumbsticks with ones that have electromagnetics instead of potentiometers. There's a video down there as well. But most people who have the Steam Deck, not the people who are watching this channel, most people who have the Steam Deck are just going to treat it like an appliance. And so Valve always has to try and balance that tightrope of making sure that they give us the power users, and I cannot believe I'm referring to myself as a power user, but give the power users as much as you possibly can without confusing the users who just want stuff to work and don't want to have to think about anything like that at all. And before everybody starts coming into the comments and saying how it's a PC and you, should, you better be ready to make all those sacrifices, get out of here. I'm not interested in the, that kind of argument. Don't be a gatekeeper. Everybody can find something for themselves about the Steam Deck. That's one of the reasons it's so cool. Just because somebody doesn't want to be a power user doesn't mean that they shouldn't use this awesome piece of hardware. And Valve obviously recognizes that. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And if this is your first time here, please subscribe. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Stay rad, everybody.